Hi everyone. I'm Ma my name is Maxim Vitichenko. I'm working for Intel, but also participating in several open source projects related to the media processing. Vasily, I start with this part of the Intel, and he's the head of the media SDK team. And from the who is also contributing recently a lot of the patches and related to the media speed. for the victimization, CMD, it can be VX up to 512, but let's leave it for a while, because one of them, it's an important topic for now and for us, right now it's a hardware acceleration, because we've spent quite some time with Yokel Press also, and we, we had a good progress on, actually I have missed one slide here, because um, I wanted to state that we passed some kind of the warm-up phase, and from our point of view, we have quite a good functionality already implemented and used by several open source projects. This has thanks for your help and support, guys. It's a handbrake of MPF LibreV in VLC. There is a feeling and there is a solid implementation from our point of view about the support for hardware acceleration of the video code. And if in the details, um, me, myself, Vasily, and so on, also, you can always do contact us about particular details of CPU optimization, but most relevant topic for us and now it's actually hardware acceleration. From the Intel in general, we have several APIs which are available, but we see we would like to be more focused uh, on the media SDK. It's a, a so-called fixing video like a part of the technology, but media SDK like part of the API, which is in the main of the Vasily in particular. The API it also comes from us and parallel topic and OpenCL, it's another topic to talk and think about, but being kind of irrelevant for the operating system like the Windows and Linux, for us it has the same, same importance, the same equal. Um, we'd like to consider first of all media SDK API, MFX or dispatcher MFX API, like a first priority. Yeah, a couple of words about, about Importance of FFPEG LibreV for us, for Intel, uh, you know that I'm representing driver team. We are practically developing and releasing our GFX driver. And I would say that um, it's done, it's happened in recent, not, not recently, but I, I believe already for, for a year, that FFMPEG based application became, became a standard for us in our validation. So each time when we to commit now a CI, we have uh, tests which based on top of uh, FFMPEG LibIV and our criteria to merge any media related changes that we should have passing on this uh, all this testing and it means that for us FFMPEG is practically one of the main open source tools in, in, in the communities and we have to care about that every hour commit, every hour change. Um, we, we, we can move forward. So for us actually, and this is kind of the two-way road, so we don't always want to have it like a single thing, so when we just really want to push something, or there is no communication, nothing like that. Um, there is a big um, kind of the environment built by any open source project, like if you compare with the you, you guys have the build and test environments, and if it will be relevant for you, we'd like to participate and help you with the building of, let's say, USB enabled range. And also it might be a point for this testing, like for, 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 for test story when you have automated tests. Um, we don't want to, actually, in our vision here is not to leave you kind of with implementation as it is, but it's more about being responsive and kind of the monitor situation about uh, bug tracks and fixes. It's actually Zong was doing a lot of them. Patches recently, me, myself also, but we'd like to be active for the track report system, for the forums as well, in order just to sustain and keep the quality. And definitely we consider to actually include and provide more patches 
made by us or maybe panels if you wish we can also reduce QSV uh, related patches as well so it's not really kind of the uh, reactive type of the contribution but we assume that we can do an active and really active type of the contributions and now it comes actually for the roadmap type of the details we'd like to keep any of the open source project especially listed above the DLC and break liberty and yeah, FFMP as well to be up to date because by the nature of my job in particular we are working with not yet released hardware and definitely it's open source stuff we'd like to have it let's say my original goal here will be really simple just at the time when the hardware is available in the market so these projects will have a proper support of the hardware and feature set because one of the important things when we do sometimes the performance improvements we'd like to have some new features with the new generation as well and this is this is our clearly speaking our goal as well so that, um, it will be at the same time available from the software side and from the hardware side for any customer or anyone who is using your middleware or final product okay. we i said already that we have very much solid base or ground right now because implementation is proven to work it's not only one year we have a kind of the development implementation in the code base, but it used to be a lot of interesting bug fixes and a lot of interesting discussions so far. But we'd like to also look a bit forward and we do have certainly certain goals for maybe like for next year from now, about how we want to count here. And those for example can be like support of the direct fix for the decoding or better usage and sometimes in this regard actually we would need to have your help for the patches, for the review, for the comments as well and the reason for that because sometimes we do have certain let's say new models of the usages right now inside the 15 15 or EPV for example like a middleware we do have certain issues of the initialization of the resources which we will discuss later but briefly speaking it's a situation where we uh, actually need to be able to know and the decoding and initialization of the decoding stage we need to know some certain things from the encoding uh, part as well which is technically not possible right now but it will make us more let's say performance model more better um, settings for each of the components or some kind of the cpu or um, for example, performance optimization related to not needed synchronizations in between of the decode filters and encode, for example. So those things are mostly relevant for improvements in the CPU utilization or memory or maybe memory footprint types. Yeah, and another thing which we are looking for is its optimization, which uh, required currently by community, but by broadcasters, by any other streaming components when you have not just one-to-one -one, uh, pipelines but when you have one-to-end pipelines when you have one source of decode and, and you have multiple encode which produce adaptive bitrate uh, output meaning that that you have up to for instance eight channels and the channels encoded with different bitrates and what we would like to avoid compared to other companies who is working on, on, on media solutions like Beamer they claim that all such type of optimization uh, related to such complicated models like ABR, they should be done in separate uh, SDK. I don't know, maybe maybe you you have heard about Beamer SDK, and they claim that folks, well, sorry, we, we cannot do it in FFmpeg Libavi. We have to implement something own to to be able to manage chan uh, channel information across layers. Across, across across different channels. So you have, for instance, 1080p, uh, SD, and you would like to do some kind of quality optimization using this information. They said it's pretty hard to do with FFmpeg or LIPAV due to architecture, other things. We think that, the, that we can do it together with you, and this is why we also mentioned another topic in this foil that we would like to discuss not just FFMP, but maybe media SDK, our Intel stack with you as a as as we as we, as we, uh, external customers as with uh, colleagues who knows more about uh, customer usage models about how they 
how you want to use video stack. And, and we see a real uh, promising uh, things here that in such type of convergence we can build not only solutions uh, at, at media SDK, not, not, we can extend not only media SDK features, but we can provide some, give some value to FF tech, maybe influence to the architecture and, and um, make, it, make it more use, uh, valid and useful for all. <laughs> and by the way, King Hour also is saying the, the different topic of the different the geographies because John is extremely uh, active in a PRC or actually like China, Taiwan, and, uh, Japan areas, and he's kind of really carefully looking for the needs in that, these regions. So it's kind of the important topic to consider here. And also, what we'd like to make sure and what we'd like to kind of the make it clear that all these kinds of the changes or improvements or things will be part of the mainstream. Right? So this is what we, we don't really see that this kind of the fork story or something will be any, anyhow beneficial for any of the project, but really it has to be part of the you guys open source projects in the terms of the mainstream. Yes, and one more thing that we, we are also interested to have such uh, changes in mainline as, Ma as Maxim mentioned in the uh, time when we have uh, hardware releasing. So it means that, for instance, for our coming generation, uh, where we have a lot of new features like range extensions for VV9, HMEC, we would like to see that the uh, support of FFPEC when, when these platforms will be launched on the market. So it means that we have to work with you ahead of real silicon, in pre-silicon stage. I <coughs> well, it's, it's, it's like I said, I'd like to again say that it's not a one-way road, and if you do have some kind of the comments, feedbacks, I mean, positive, constructive, or whatsoever, just really, I mean, you know the names right now, and feel free to really kind of come back to us to discuss more topics. <coughs> Thank you.